Welcome back everyone. If you're new here, my name is Brian Jenks and today we're going to be talking about the Zotero to iPad workflow for annotating your PDFs, getting markdown notes, and putting them into your Obsidian Vault for your Zettelkasten personal knowledge management system. If this sounds interesting to you, or if you're one of the many people who have been requesting this video for a long time, hopefully you will enjoy this. I will try to keep it brief and to the point. Uh, there's a lot of really cool things we can do with the Zot file plugin or add-on in Zotero, and one of, one, one of them is syncing across to your uh, iPads through something like iCloud or another cloud service so that we can annotate and then re-upload our PDFs to Zotero with extracted annotations and already be ready and set to get those into Obsidian. So if that sounds interesting, stay tuned. So if you already have followed the Zot file Zotero workflow for annotating PDFs and getting markdown notes into Obsidian using my workflow video that I'll put a card up there for, if you've already done that, then you're not going to have to do too much else because we're all only using one of those two add-ons that I mentioned, Zot file, within Zotero to actually do everything I'm going to be showing you today. So if you just freshly downloaded Zotero, Add the, added the Zot file add-in, then that's it. That's all you have to do. And one other point I should mention, if this isn't obvious to anybody, is that because Zotero is cross-platform, meaning it can be used on Linux, Mac, and Windows, and because this Zot file workflow with um, tablet syncing works with pretty much whatever uh, cloud service provider you have, Dropbox, OneDrive, uh, iCloud, this means that if your tablet can access a cloud service, then this workflow will likely work for you. So you don't need to be restricted to Apple products. You don't need to be restricted to a, a particular cloud service provider or any of these things. You're pretty open with what you can actually use this on. Now, just because of what I'm actually using and what I have, I have a MacBook Pro, I have an iPad, and I think it's like the seventh or ninth generation. It's an older one. It's not a Pro either. It's just, it's just a cheap iPad. And I have the Apple Pencil first generation and I am using iCloud. So basically all the, all the Apple stuff, because this is what I have, it's the ecosystem. So you do not have to be restricted to that, but that is just what I am showing you. So keep that in mind. All right, so diving right in. Now, when you first download Zotero, you're probably not gonna have anything in there, but when you add your documents, you have all the different things that you have in your Zotero library, great. Now you've also downloaded the add-on Zot file, and if you follow the video I referenced earlier, then you know you download the .xpi file or whatever, and you drop drag and drop it into this tools add-ons menu. You just drag and drop it in here. There it is. You'll likely have to restart Zotero. After that, you're done. You're ready to go. You're exactly where I'm at right now and about to show you. I deleted all the other stuff, so I'm actually going to rebuild this from scratch for you on how we actually use and utilize this workflow. So first things first, we're gonna go to tools, and then now down because we have Zot file installed, you'll see Zot file preferences. Click that, tablet settings. This is where all the magic happens. All you need to do is click this use Zot file to send and get files from tablet. Clicking that, now you have this feature enabled. What's this drop down menu? This is basically saying, do you want to create saved search folders so you can see all the things that are currently sent to your iPad or tablet and which things that have been sent and are modified? Um, I just say yes, because why not? And now you'll see these two new folders get created. These are the tablet files of files that are on your tablet and then the ones that are on your tablet and that have been modified by you. Now, this is likely gonna be blank uh, for you if you haven't done this process yet, but you can choose where you want your folder to be placed for these files when they get sent to your tablet. This is where you want to actually specify somewhere in your cloud service provider folder. You know, if you have like Dropbox or OneDrive or iCloud, you have those folders on your desktop that are the folders that sync to your cloud service. That's where we're gonna put this folder. So you can click choose, pick your folder, and this is just when I actually put it on to iCloud for me. If I show folder, this is where it actually creates this see, iCloud drive and Zotero PDFs. This is what I named it. Um, I, think, I think I named it Zotero PDFs. But in any case, you need to have this folder in, this, uh, in your cloud service, otherwise certain options won't appear and you'll be like, wait, I just did everything he did. Why aren't I seeing these options? You need to make sure this folder exists. So just in case, double check, make sure this is in here. Um, but once you choose that folder, you'll, can, you can see it in here. I got a green check mark. Great. What are these other options? 
create subfolders from Zotero collections. This is basically saying, I have a nested collection here. I have my library, but then I also have uh, inbox and then a sub collection of all the papers from How to Take Smart Notes by Zonka Adams. And this is a f collection of all the papers that I wanted to read that were referenced by that book. So it's a sub collection of inbox. Now, what, what does this option do? This says basically if I send a PDF from this collection, the nested collection to my tablet, it's gonna create that same directory structure on my tablet just to mock it out so I have the same structure. So basically I would have an empty folder of inbox even though I have things in there in Zotero. On my tablet, it would be an empty folder saying inbox and then a folder within that folder by the same name, how to take smart notes papers. And then inside that nested collection folder, you'll have the one paper or however many that I sent to my tablet. And we'll see this in a live example, but I keep this because I really like making sure I know where all the structure and everything is. I haven't messed with any of these other options. Rename files when they are sent to the tablet. I'm pretty sure I had left all of these default. That's all I really needed to do. And then this option down here at the bottom, if it's not checked for you, I would recommend checking it because it just, it simplifies it. Automatically extract annotations when getting your PDFs back from the tablet. So you know if you follow the Zotero and Zot file workflow of getting their markdown notes, what this will do is it will already extract your annotations to the rich text format file in Zotero as soon as you pull those files back from your tablet and into your main Zotero database. So this means that almost all the steps except the final extraction to markdown is done for you just by dragging this back into your Zotero database. So with all that set, that's it. We just Leave these options and that's as simple as it gets. So now here's where the magic happens. If I go to my folder and I pick a particular PDF, let's do model of creative thinking process on analysis, blah, 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 whatever this file is. I'm going to right click on this entire thing. Now this includes only the PDF. If I did something like this, where it has multiple things in here, it would send the whole, the whole batch. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna select this paper, this PDF, the document, the entire collected item here, right click, we're going to say manage attachments. And now you see some options here that you might not have seen before. Send to tablet, get from tablet, and send to subfolder on tablet. These are the options that now this new uh, tablet workflow will open up for you. So if you send it to tablet, it's just going to drop it in at the top level and not care about your folder structure. But because we checked that item where I wanted it to send it to a nested sub collections, see how this is presenting itself? inbox slash how to take smart notes citations. This is where I actually have that replicated directory structure so I can actually see how this is actually laid out in my Zotero database, but replicated in the directory structure on the tablet in my cloud service provider. So I'm going to click this option. Yes, please. It's gonna give a little pop-up here saying it's moved to the tablet. What does that do? What does that mean? Well, if I go to tags, you can now see this is what it was talking about, about saved searches underscore tablet because this has now been sent to my tablet. So this tag will be added and removed along with a couple others to manage different files being used with this workflow. Going to tablet files here, the saved search we created. Now this item is on here. If I open it, oh, interesting. This is now on here. Now, if I open up my iCloud uh, folder, go to Zotero PDFs, interesting inbox, how to take notes and ah, there's the PDF. That's the document. It is now on my iCloud instance. And with this, we can now open up iCloud or whatever, again, tablet, cloud service provider, open that document up on your tablet, edit it, and then re have those changes sync to the cloud service provider and then pull them back into Zotero. And let's see what this actually looks like in practice. If you enjoy my Obsidian content and you have interest in what I'm doing, what type of work I'm currently performing, and maybe getting information about my upcoming Obsidian course that I am developing, 0 to 99 Obsidian course, where you go from absolute beginner, never touched any sort of programming or Obsidian, all the way to where I'm at, where I'm working, and what I'm doing, and all the technologies around Obsidian. This is a comprehensive course I'm developing on more than just, here's the markdown syntax, here's how to link two notes together. I'm talking about comprehensive zero to whatever you see me doing. And that is currently a project I'm undertaking. If that sounds interesting to you, you can sign up at my uh, to my newsletter in the link in the description, as well as the pinned comment below with all of the timestamps to this video. So hope to see you there. So now on my iPad, 
now that I have those file that file in my iCloud instance, so I have it on the cloud and I can access it from the iPad, I'm going to use my Apple Pencil and my current iPad tablet to go to my files. And now I can see Zotero PDF. There's the inbox, the directory structure I was expecting, and then here's the file. Now you can see I have a little download button because I need to actually pull this down from the cloud onto the tablet. So if I do that, it'll actually download the file. And now I have it. Excellent. So at this point, what you're going to need is actually a uh, PDF reader that will let you highlight and add comments. Now there's, again, more stuff to the Zot file Zotero workflow on the Obsidian forum post that I did not get into. I'm doing pretty much just the easiest thing, and this is what is all I need and what I'm doing and works for me. But all I really wanted to do was highlight and add comments to those highlights so I can extract those things into Markdown. Now you're going to need a PDF viewer to do that. What I really liked and what is free and what get, got the job done easily enough was Adobe Acrobat. I don't really like Adobe, but it gets the job done. It's free for all of the features that I needed, which is highlights and comments, and that's it. So I downloaded Adobe, and now what we can do is we can go to our file that is on our cloud instance, open up that file, and in the top right, you're gonna see open in Acrobat, and that is what we want to do. I'm gonna open it up, and it's going to actually download that file into Adobe, and we're gonna be able to edit it now. So now I can take my Apple Pencil, I can hold, and then I can drag uh, to select a bunch of text. I can highlight this, and this is what I would be doing if I was going to be going through a document or a research paper. I can then tap on that highlight. I can actually write a note. So I can type hello, or hello. I can type, I can write hello world. And now it will actually put my text in there. I can post that comment and I'm done. And I can actually t click out of here or tap out of there and go back to the cloud folder. Now this is back in Adobe. It's not where I care about to be, but if I go back to files, you can see it's actually updating and now it's updated. So now this file on iCloud has been updated from my changes that I made on the iPad. So now what I can do from this is I can then go back to Zotero and pull in my annotations. So now back in Zotero, I can then look at Zotero and say, okay, we have tablet files, we have tablet files that have been modified, but this file is still here. If we look at the tag, you can see it now says underscore tablet underscore modified, which then if we actually go to the tablet files modified folder, we can see this PDF in there. And interesting, okay, so if we open the PDF, interesting, there's nothing on here though, that's weird. So let's actually right click and we're going to uh, get from tablet. And what this is going to do is that once the file is updated, it's going to pull the file from the tablet back into your Zotero database and because we had that option checked for extracting annotations, it's going to extract those annotations into the actual collected item in your Zotero database. So let's do that now. And you can see it's got some annotations here, some little pop-ups going on. Check mark, we're good there. Annotations, got that. And now there's nothing in the tablet file save searches because it's not on the tablet anymore. It's not in the folder on your iCloud or cloud service provider instance. If I go to Zotero PDFs, there is nothing in here. Okay, so it's been pulled back in. If I go to that item now and I open it up, there is now some extracted annotations. Now you notice that when I opened the PDF, it didn't show those annotations. I'm not sure if that's a bug or if I would just need to restart Zotero, but ultimately it works still. I can open up the PDF, my annotations and highlight are here, and I can now look at my extracted annotations, excellent. And with MD Notes, the MD Notes add-in from the Zotero workflow uh, video, I can now extract these to Markdown and put them into my Obsidian Vault as literature notes from this research paper. That is the entire workflow. Very simple, very easy, and very easy to manage and maintain. So hopefully you found this video interesting. Let me know what sort of tools or other workflows that you use with PDFs, Zotero, uh, tablets, and how you do any sort of mobile editing on your research papers, documents, and etc. I'd be really interested in hearing about how you apply this. Uh, leave a comment in the comment section below, and let me know how how you use something like this and or if you're going to use this workflow let me know how well it works for you and any pain points you might have with it and a quick note before i go 
Thank you to the patrons who support this channel. Rito, Leonardo, Justin, Brandon, Klaus, Pippa, Alberto, Clark, Joel, John, John, and Paul. Thank you all for donating and supporting this channel through Patreon. If you'd like to support the channel, uh, there's a variety of ways, depending on whatever you feel comfortable with and feel like doing. There's one-time donations through Buy Me A Coffee, PayPal. There's recurring donations through Patreon or my pref preferred method, GitHub Sponsors, that doesn't take any sort of fees or cut. And just watching the videos. Anything helps. It's all appreciated. Nothing's required. And I appreciate everybody who does support this channel. So with that, I will see you in the next one.